Hey guys, Steva here and today I have quite a funny video for you guys of how we managed to kill a Latron in under 9 seconds according to the game clock. Of course, without using any damage cheats or generally cheat mods. The first question that goes through everyone's head is probably, how the heck is it even possible like you literally need over 10 seconds to get to the monster? And then you have to deal another 75,000 damage to kill a Latron. So how, in the name of her father and Lord Fatalis, is this even possible? Well, as seen in the thumbnail, it is the power of the strongest weapon in the game. The Insect Glaive. Or let me call it the time and space bending stuff. That can freeze monsters and slow down in-game clock for the game, while the other player moves and attacks at normal speed. Okay, uh, I'm just kidding. I have to be honest, sadly this isn't a win for Insiglaive, I still wish the best of luck for the fellow IG mains in the future though. A quick reminder to people that may have forgotten to subscribe to my channel, I will appreciate it very much, because according to YouTube you guys enjoy or watch my videos and are not subscribed, so hit that subscribe button now, thank you. And if you follow me on Twitter, you may got a clue from the last wits of what this whole trick is about. The technique was known or heard of uh, for a while, but no one really tried or had interest in it to cover it or make a video, so it never got big, and it's really the first time I, I heard of. Um, all you need for that is a friend with a potato PC, and with potato PC I really do mean an actual potato with a CPU and a hard drive that somehow can run games, even if it's at worst possible performance. For now, I'll give credit to a kid named uh, Dako or Daki. Uh, according to the people I asked, he, he was the first one uh, to notice it because he had really, really uh, a really, really bad potato PC, and their cool Taroth run were like uh, 40 seconds faster than real time. But yeah, I, I don't have much information to credit further and all the right owners, but but that's what the people that I heard of about this trick told me about. So, there is the thing that if you run Monster Hunter below 30 FPS, or I guess it applies to other games too, it starts bothering the in-game clock, as in uh, real-time speedrun is not the same as in-game clock time. But therefore, our TA category, we should always count the real-time of the video and hunt length, and this is slightly a disclaimer to not think this technique is gonna beat any RTA real-time speedruns, but it's still the definition of speedrunning to its core. You probably have seen those crazy GoldenEye uh, or Super Mario speedruns breakdowns where people just skip straight to the credits, a and it may not be technical skill or for, but it's still a research and knowledge skill and optimization and discoveries over the years to keep cutting times uh, on those games uh, where people thought they're already pushing the limit. But but that's totally not the topic. So, the clock gets quite desynced and left behind at very low FPS. And around 25 FPS the difference is minimal and there is probably some runs out there that have 3 seconds faster in-game time or like I mentioned before, the 40 second faster on the KT. Um, now, what would happen if you nerf your FPS to 1? As in 1 frame per second, so basically a slideshow of pictures. And that's what we did for the sake of fun and curiosity. And we indeed were laughing our asses off because it was totally hilarious and unexpected what was happening during the hunts. The clock time for Sibel was running 20 times slower than real time. So Sibel was the one posting the quest and since it's a host based game and we decided that he should be the one that runs at 1 FPS. Uh, after a 10 hour loading screen since the loading gets also slowed down to 1 FPS and this was horrible, I, I load in the quest slightly before Sibel. I guess that's a point where specific map and monster data has fully loaded for both players, but the 1 FPS player has and host has to go through a little bit more loading, like it didn't take much longer than after I loaded in. And now I'm in the quest alone while Sibel is stuck in the loading screen. And at this point, the in-game time hasn't started counting yet, nor does the monster take any damage, so you can't do anything basically except preparation. It took quite a while to figure out uh, when the hunt really begins, 
but I'm not gonna go much into detail because this is a totally unresearched area and I have the lack of technical knowledge, but I will explain what we perceived and think that we understood of what's happening. Since uh, the game time was not counting, uh, I had the big brain idea to kill myself. I seem to activate fortify and have the efficiency, uh, the efficient 10 extra percent of damage before even the hunt starts. Sadly, the carding animation and switching builds animation was way too long and we didn't make it in time. So I just normally buffed myself since it's not wasting any time, else Demon Drag wouldn't be worth it, obviously. And now I'm going to Alachion and wait there for Sip's command to tell me when the clock starts counting. So that's where I can do any actions and damage to the monster. The Palico buff was played there to not get wasted at the beginning since it lasts only 90 seconds. I wanted to have it going on when the actual hunt starts. Also, funnily enough, I couldn't tenderize the monster before its very first AI action, which is a uh, life search can the spawn animation. Every monster has a starting animation before it even engage, before you even engage it. And you can see it defroze for a bit and I instantly clutched and tenderized it. That's the first time you can tenderize the monster and it took quite a bit to figure out because before that you were just clutching and falling off or tenderizing and nothing was happening. And yeah, the, the monster being frozen is totally not a glitch or a bug. But since it's a host based game, uh, first the host must receive any processing animation and then it goes through the guest players. And since Sibel is running at 1 FPS, it takes almost forever for the monster to do uh, any of his attacks or animations. They're being initiated and you can fully see them at normal speed once they're fully loaded for him. And here's a short clip of Renner Gigante of how he does normally the animation, but then he freezes because then it's an AI move. Like it's... This head attack is uh, divided, I think, on two or three AI attacks. So it's like the first animation and then the second. They're once they're fully loaded, they play at normal speed. And this was actually at like, I think, 15. Yeah, this was at 15 FPS. So at 15, 15 FPS, you can still see somehow the monster movement. Uh, that's really the whole trick for him. Time passes in slow motion while I can play peak performance, and this really took a few hours to optimize. So even if monsters is not moving, it, it doesn't mean that it's easy. G generally, I'm a bit of annoyed of people, lack of knowledge, calling everything cheese that looks easy when in reality there is tons of hours behind to optimize. And the saying I love is, uh, if it looks easy, you did your job right. As long as optimization exists, everything is scaled to how much time you're willing to spend to make something as close to perfection as possible. Even if killing a cool Yaku, like the 9 second, it took people days and weeks to fully optimize a cool Yaku which dies in one hit, that's not cheese, it's full peak performance speedrunning at its best and optimization, and it's even harder, the shorter the fight, the harder it is to keep cutting seconds. An example for this run we did now uh, was having the perfect lines across the chest and tail, Clutching on the left wing avoided a very horrible time losing Clagger at the end at the beginning of the hunt which wasted like 0.5 seconds uh, aka 10 seconds for me in real time uh, Checking if 45 heroics is worth it, sadly both didn't have time and a few more stuff uh, Obviously not anywhere close to any of my other runs uh, Again, this is totally not a flex uh, of how you can beat every speedrun if going according to the in-game clock time just something I hope you guys enjoy watching. You know, I'm, I'm trying to take something silly and make an entertaining content out of it. I have over 250 normal speedruns on my channel with 7 different weapons that you can watch anytime if you don't enjoy shooting frozen monster, even though most of my runs are fully scripted so the monsters don't move much. Now, I'm going to leave you with this gameplay of boring 3 minutes shooting at the same spot, but hey, you can see the positive side of it and take it as an ASMR relaxation uh, with all those juicy multi ticks. Uh, with that said, I wish you all a nice day and happy hunting, guys.
Join Cat Gang. 